um, you know, capitalists move on to you and talk about recreation and marijuana. Big issue. Uh, every time we bring it up in our boardroom or our government affairs uh, committee meetings, it just uh, it goes on and on and on. There's a great lot of angst around um, the rights of employers should recreational marijuana um, be approved this year. So would you please address that? And is it your guess that we will have some type of legislation passed this year that does um, approve the recreational use of that? First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me here this afternoon to uh, participate in this discussion. And the process of the marijuana has progressed over the years. A number of years ago, we passed medical marijuana. Then probably about four or five years ago, we decriminalized marijuana in the state of Rhode Island. And now we're looking at to uh, legalize marijuana in the state of Rhode Island. In the governor's budget, she proposed as a $6.5 million, million dollar uh, revenue source there this year, and it's approximately $20 million, $1 million next year. With, with that in mind, however, marijuana is still illegal at the federal level. So a number of good people who are here this afternoon, you have businesses deal with federal funds and things of that nature, so how things happen at the state level has a diff different impact on you, especially with respect to uh, employment. I mean, you look at the Quonset Point EB, they have a strict no tolerance policy. Other businesses, and you look, we have Massachusetts has legalized marijuana, and the new governor of Connecticut said he's going to legalize marijuana, so we're caught in the middle. What does Rhode Island do at this point? We're getting the sins of the marijuana when the people use it and have certain issues that arise with it. Should we get any revenue from that? But then there's the business aspect of this. How is it going to affect my employees? What type of jobs do my employees do? Can I restrict whether they can have any marijuana in their system or not? If I do restrict, can I only do it when it's, they're on the job, when they're working for you? What can I do it outside of the point? Those are all issues that have to be addressed. I know in the legislation that the government proposed, she has, hers is very extreme in respect to employment, giving the employees a lot of uh, leeway on what they can do. And I, I know that the, the lobbyist for your organization has already reached out to us to raise some of those concerns. I think it's important that new member organizations here contact your legislators as well as the members of the General Assembly so we can make an intelligent decision when we do make a decision on this later in the session. I know that the Senate President has said it's a working process. It's not quite there yet. So the more input that we get in making a decision and more input from the people in the business community, because you have employ a lot of people in the state of Rhode Island. I was sitting at lunch today with the president of Rhode Island Hospital, who says their whole organization employs 15,000 people in the state of Rhode Island. However, she did say the caveat that we do get a lot of federal funding, so the hands are a little tighter. Those are the things we want to look at, how it's going to affect the employers and the employees. 